This week on Cine News. Did you happen to see a little girl go by here? No. I'm looking for my daughter. She's six, my daughter. You probably saw us. I was carrying her. She has uh, Sandy She's hair. probably carrying a chenille bear. Jodie Foster is caught in a terrifying flight plan. It is a real primal concern of that every parent has that you can't keep your child safe. Welcome to Cine News, the show for people who love movies, from the biggest blockbusters to the most personal independents and everything in between. We begin this week's show by joining Jodie Foster on a trip that turns into terror aboard her new thriller, Flight Plan. All right, 26. Yeah, here we go. It's essentially the story of a of a woman who has to rebuild her psyche after the tragic loss of her husband and uh, she boards a plane flying back from Berlin to New York uh, with her daughter and her daughter goes missing. Excuse me, I'm just looking for my daughter. Well, she can't have gone too far. And then you're not quite sure whether the girl ever really boarded the plane or not, whether she really exists or not, and that's sort of the engine that drives the movie. Did you happen to see a little girl go by here? No. I'm looking for my daughter. She's six, my daughter. You probably saw us. I was carrying her. She has uh, sandy she's hair. She's probably carrying a chenille bear. She's not in very good shape right now. She's scared of everything. It is a real primal concern mm -hmm. uh, that every parent has that you can't keep your child safe. And uh, not so much the obvious things of, you know, somebody could take her or uh, something bad could be happening to her, but just the general fear of just not being able to keep, keep them safe in the world and that they will have to encounter injustices and cruelty. And there's really just not much you can do about it. It's kind of powerlessness in front of the thing that you love more than yourself. Um, I can't even articulate that for people. I think really the performance, that's sort of what the performance is all about. Her backpack's missing. Somebody has. We tried to capture that feeling of being stuck in the sort of nocturnal confined space for a length of time and um, use that to our advantage in terms of telling the story. And we made the decision to you know, never really venture outside of the plane either. Do you know where my daughter is? What are you telling me? Cut! It becomes even more surreal when you're on a plane with people for five months, four months. Mm -hmm. um, I think the extras had a really hard time with it on this film. Um, we kept thinking, what a great gig. You're going to be on this movie for this long. And uh, they just kept leaving us. They just couldn't stand being there. Um, and they'd fall asleep all the time because it was always dark and it, uh, somebody would have to poke them to wake them up. Strange experience. It's a strange sensation. It's something quite unnatural about it, I think. You know, I don't know if people actually work in that environment. It must be very difficult to be a pilot or a stewardess or whatever. Just to, just to be crossing those time differences, you know, and do something to your head, I don't know. There is something sort of sci-fi about flying, for me anyway. I mean, I feel like I'm in a science fiction movie, especially in a plane like this, you know. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be at all. Because in the middle of a flight, you can't get up and walk out, right? So every half hour or so, you can go outside and get some sun and come back in and go to craft services, you know, you know. It was, uh, it was nice. And to be able to wander around a plane entirely freely is also really fun. I would go up and take naps in first class. It was nice. You in the airline business? Yeah, I'm a propulsion engineer. I work for Elgin Air. When we, we wrapped in Los Angeles and we were heading to Berlin, getting in that airplane was the strangest thing because you keep going like, can I just lift this up and move it? You couldn't move any of the seats on the real airplane. And people kept telling you, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry bathroom you're like are you kidding me it, um, it was strange it was strange to not own the plane there's nine closets on this plane right there's four up and there's five down there's the holds there's uh, uh, seven galleys there's the crew quarters we try to keep everything in sequence for a movie like this I think it's very helpful for everybody involved because you can still remember what you did the day before now the decks were not built at the same time so we shot out the upper deck and then we shot the lower deck but it still afforded us the opportunity to pretty much stay in sequence for most of the movie we shot quite a bit of the movie in sequence and I think that helps because you kind of knew what came before um, and, and that helps Mostly you just kind of have to keep a log of it in your mind and hopefully you have a logical enough brain that you can kind of break down the structure of the movie so you know where you are at all times. I can't tell you how sorry I am, but my main responsibility is the safety of these passengers and I can't allow anyone to jeopardize that. It was quite good for us, I thought, in a sense, because it was, it was a claustrophobic atmosphere which added to this sort of 
inescapability of the, of, of the situation. It's a movie that sort of stays in this tone, you know, and so we're always trying to stay within that particular context. What'd you do to the lights? Where is she? It's a pretty steady rise. 